Welcome to The Conversation. You're listening to Andy Mason, and this is authentic conversations around the messy intersection of family, faith, and business. And I've got a raw one for you uh, this morning, this evening, whatever time it is you're listening. I'm actually recording this uh, in the evening on Monday. I'd started it this morning, but then uh, I was tying up a blog with this as well, and my wife gave me feedback that I was, just wasn't going in the right direction. That's how kind of raw it is in terms of what we're walking through. I'm sitting in my office, and it's dark outside, and I can see a frog climbing up the window on the outside. That's kind of authentic. haven't seen that happen before. So what I want to talk with you through is how I'm pivoting and what we're doing differently really as a result of what we've experienced the last two months. So there's good news and there's challenge. So the good news is with heaven and business, I heard God say, don't change the subject, change the delivery. So we've literally uh, canceled, had to cancel three events, which are a significant part of our income as a, as a department, as an entity. And we've obviously that's significant. That's impacted us greatly. But in changing the delivery and looking at how could we do what we're doing differently, uh, we've turned out we launched an executive type retreat, but virtual. And we thought, well, if we get you know 25 people, that's how many would go for registrations. Well, good news, it's been an amazing journey. The team that I've got are phenomenal in how they're adjusting. Deb, Debbie's been phenomenal in how she's just managed that whole, how do we set up an event online, virtually sending gift basket, baskets and boxes out so that people can literally experience what we experience in our office wherever they are. And we've literally got 27 people signed up, plus two that we sponsored for the 25 spaces that we were believing for. So super delighted with that. It's something we're highly likely to refine, adapt, and starts this week. So super excited about that. And then we're looking to say, well, if this goes well, we'll adjust, adapt, and pivot even further and possibly do that monthly. So look out for that. You can see more on heaveninbusiness.com. So that's one piece of good news. The second piece is for us personally. So I here's just a background. Uh, part of what I do gets a salary under Heaven and Business. And in order to supplement that salary to fully fund my family, I travel once a month. And through travel, speaking fees, and book sales, product sales, that's a significant supplement to our income. So obviously, anybody that knows anything about travel right now, you know that's that's gone. That's zero. And that's not going to work for me. All that, all of that is, it's like, okay, God, what do I do? I, I can't just do nothing. Uh, I'm not traveling, but then what do I do from an income point of view? And so for the last two months, uh, we've had so many different things going on. I've launched three different things. One, a book, uh, the book Finding Hope in Crazy Times. We wrote that back in August, finished it for editing before Christmas put the last pieces together to launch it at the start of April. Unbelievable timing. And our expectation that that was going to go boom. And sure, it did great the first month. And now it's kind of tapered off. We're like, oh, that's not hit the targets that we expected it to. Secondly, great conversation with Ray Edwards turned into what we called a 30-day hope challenge. And we were doing a live every morning, 7 a.m. for about 30 or so minutes. We'd literally go through one chapter of the book. And we pivoted, we'd go behind the scenes, we'd call audibles. We were pretty raw and real with one another and with our audience, which turned into 400 to 600 people pretty much every single day, sometimes more. So it was amazing, it was free, and then we turned that into a, what if we, what if we go behind the scenes and some of the impact that we've had with our listeners and viewers has been us going behind the scenes and saying, you know, what are we doing? How are we making decisions? How are we navigating now? How are we leading our teams? And so he said, what if we turned that into, hey God, what now? And literally that was what we've been doing for the last two weeks now. And we thought, well, that'd be amazing. So we charged a small fee. We've got 40 people walking through that. But in all of these three launches, two months, a book, a 30 day hope challenge, and a course that's walking people through hearing God and pivoting in life, it's all outstanding material. All of the feedback says the experience is amazing, yet something feels like it's just not hitting the target. I'm scrambling, I'm running, I'm doing tons. 
Uh, there's so many other things that I'm pouring into and pouring into others around me. Yet it's like something's something's missing. I'm just not hitting the vein. And now on top of that, I've got three disappointments, three things that I've kind of scrambled, reached out, launched, expanded uh, energy and uh, and effort to get those going. And it's just like, hmm, they've been good, but not great. There's something that's not quite resonating with me. And so it's forced me to take a step back, pause, sit back and reflect. I'm doing lots of good activity, but it's really aimed, or is it really aimed in the right place? Uh, do you ever sit down and ask that question of yourself? You know, sometimes we've been forced to stay at home. That's lifting in different places right now. But have I taken this time to really examine what it is that I'm doing? Am I doing what I'm called to do, or am I just doing what's expected of me? So for me, I'm doing lots of good activity, but is it really aimed in the right place? Is the activity and good feedback actually keeping me from what I really need to be doing? Is the sense I'm missing something actually a gift to help me focus and align with greater clarity? That's what I'm starting to ask myself. And I'm gonna walk you through that process. I pause some more, and really, what I've got to do is ask some deeper questions, get below the surface, scratch further. What's the why? What's the what's the what behind the, the goal? What's really going? What's behind that? Keep asking myself, what is my purpose? What is it that when I'm doing it, all of me resonates? I was born for this. What is my superpower? You say, what's your superpower? Well, that's the things that when I do it, it seems so effortless for me, but others are just as shocked and amazed. You know, one of those things for me is just crazy connections. I'll, I'll go through an airport, lose my phone, and the per person that helped me find my phone ended up giving me a private plane ride because the plane we were supposed to be on broke down and I didn't even know their name when they offered that. That just, those sorts of crazy things just happen again and again and again. I haven't had the private plane ride like that again, but who who does that happen to? It's like I have this mental Rolodex of people, that's for those of you younger, that's like a contact list, people that I know that trust me, that I can, hey, I know someone that you should talk to. That's just huge, it's significant, it opens doors for people. The second thing is strategic connections, sorry, strategic questions. The ability is when I sit down with someone, I can ask a question that changes their perspective. When you do that for someone, it's like a miracle happens. Because if you can change someone's perspective, you've changed their world. So when people have a conversation with me, miracles happen. That's some of my superpowers. So. I'm processing, what is it? Am I doing that? Uh, I started to think clearer. And so what I've done, and I'm gonna walk you through, is just some of the process to where I've got, and then I'm gonna tell you where I'm going. Whether you're gonna do and jump on board with what we're doing, that's irrelevant. That's really, what I want you to do is listen to this, listen to the process, and take the time to do the same. Uh, pause, sit, uh, get rid of hurry. I'm reading this book right now by um, John Mark Comus. It's called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And it is brilliant. It's what I need to listen to right now and realize, oh, wow, some of the activity, even the good activity, is killing my greatness. It's killing what is possible. And right now we're in an invitation zone to have a look at what we're doing, pause, sit back, reflect, ask ourselves questions. What, what am I really born for? I'm not called to reach the world. Who are my 12? Who are the ones that I was born to serve them, to help them become great? Have I identified them? What do they look like? How would I know when I'm with them? What is it that when I'm with those people, it's like I'm in my zone. It's like all of the gifting in me resonates. I get into a hum and here we go. So here's the hum. So I was talking and processing this with my wife. And uh, as we're talking about it, it's like, hey, babe, what if we did next month? We just mix it up. And one of the things that I know I've called, I'm called to is, is, is this phrase, powerful people. Now, you could misinterpret that so many different ways. But there's just a, it's a certain, 
look, feel, influence of people that they know where they're going, they know what they're doing, they're prepared to pay the price to get there, they're ready to put all cards on the table and go for it, like full on, all in. That kind of people, when I'm with them, something resonates and things get unlocked. I'm like a pure catalyst in the environment and literally their lives change. I walk into a, a ranch with one of my customers and say, hey, John, have you looked at purchasing this property up the road? He's like, no way, I couldn't do that. I go with him around the property, show him how he could do that, encourage him to do it. And within three days, he decides to do, he buys it, develops it, does exactly what I said and generates $1.5 million within five years tax-free. What's the point? Without that catalytic conversation, nothing would have happened. It's like him. It's like Peter. I do a dream workshop. He hears this message all his life. He's wanted to be a fine a wildlife artist, fine artist. Everyone said, nah, you can't do that. Where would you get trained? What artist makes money? But he hears a message which changes his perspective. And he says, what if I go for it? He goes for it. Within six months, his art is being picked up at a national level. And now he's a leader in his field. What's the point? When people meet with me, miracles happen. Not all people, but a certain group of people. When I'm with them, something changes. Everything begins to hum. And so I'm talking to Janine about this, my wife, and saying, what, what if we did this? What if next month we take the ingredients out of the book, Dream Culture, Bringing Dreams to Life, how to actually get back into what was I born for? What makes me come alive? What would I do if I was 10 times more courageous, if I was fearless? What do I want to change in the world? Actually get back to the core essence of who I am and what I am born for. Line it up and then go after it. We could do that. We could take the best out of this in one month. And with a small group of people, we can walk with them and help them sing, help them hum. As I'm saying that, I say it to my wife, I'm thinking 12 people. I look outside, there's a hummingbird. I'm like, mm, that's really cool. Those things are amazing. They just, like, there's so much activity happening around them, and yet they're perfectly still. And they can move forwards, back, up, down, sideways, even upside down. I've heard it said that according to the law of physics, what they do should be impossible. But no one told the hummingbird. I'm thinking, wow, that's a hummingbird. They, that's kind of a symbol for favor for me. That's pretty cool. Didn't think much of it. But then I got on a call with Ray Edwards and Ray started to talk to me about some of the same things. He's Andy, there's something about a conversation with you. And I think you need to refine who you are focusing on. Don't stop all of what you're doing, but focus more attention in a specific place. He said, you need to grab this book, The Prosperous Coach by Rich Litvin and Steve Chandler. So I'm thinking, you know what? He's, something he was saying was resonating, was beginning to hum. So I grabbed hold of the book. I read it, open up the book on the front cover is a hummingbird. Read inside the first phrase. It talks about the hummingbird and the things I just told, told you. They move upside down, backwards, forwards, left, right. Complete calm and yet so much activity. It's impossible and yet it's not. What if God is starting to speak to me? Andy, it's time to realign with who you were really born to be. Then I have another conversation with a friend, Blake. And Blake points me in the direction of, Andy, you need to read this book, The Go-Giver. And I read that and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is resonating again. It's beginning to hum. And then another conversation with uh, Cheryl Wilder. Cheryl is a marriage and family therapist. She's a counselor. And she is brilliant. I meet with her, or I will meet with her, maybe my wife will meet with her, or we'll meet with her together. So good. And we start to talk through the same thing. And she tells me more, even more about the hummingbird. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a conspiracy of the hummingbirds. What if this whole COVID thing, I get it, people, are, it's, there's, it's painful, it's terrible. But what if... The silver lining in this is causing me to pause, sit back, stop, listen, and focus. Let the activity happen. Let those wings buzz, but be still and go after the nectar like that little hummingbird does. And she directs me to this book called 
codependent no more. And I read through this and sure, the majority of that is, is about alcoholics, but I'm realizing I might not be codependent with alcohol, but there's a codependence where I have lived my life trying to please others or trying to say, if someone around me is not happy, is not pleased, then I adjust my life. I bend my life out of resonance until they feel okay. What's the point? I'm not okay if they're not okay. No, 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 that's wrong. That's called codependent. It's okay. I'm okay if you're not okay. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to help you. But I'm not going to not be me in the process. And so I realize how much I've reduced my life to people around me because of my own dysfunction, my own insecurities and my own fears. And Walking with Cheryl has just been amazing, that book, Codependent No More. What's the point? All of these things are starting to come into alignment and resonate, and I'm realizing, hey God, what now? I talked to Janine, I talked to Cheryl, I talked to Ray. It's all pointing in one direction, and I realize, wow, it's time. It's time to actually go, fully go after what I was born for. No longer pleasing people, I'm there to serve people people. I'm not there to be their friend. I'm there to help them realize their greatness. What's the point for you? As if you're sitting around and you're wondering at that same, it's like, am I just, am I just doing, am I just sucking oxygen or using up time? Or am I ready to fully invest the time and effort? I'm ready to ask the hard questions. I'm ready to leave no stone unturned. I'm ready to take action leave safety behind me and actually go for it full on and let's see what we can do with God. Let's see what is possible as to say, what am I doing and why? It's not too late. What if you could find someone to help you rediscover your purpose and realign your focus now? The result is life-changing and literally that's what we're going to do. So what I'm putting together for next month, I, I, we don't even know what we're going to call it. So literally, I'm just walking you through the process. You can go to, uh, you can jump onto our landing page and it's literally mail, M-A-I-L-C-H-I dot M-P. So it's a MailChimp landing page backslash Andy and Janine backslash authentic. I'll post that in the link. You can go there, sign up, and we'll let you know what we're doing. We're literally going to walk with just 12 people for one month through a series of activities, exercises, and genuine, authentic conversations to get to the raw and real you, realign with purpose, and catalyze you moving forward into what you're born for so that you can literally say, this is what I was made for. This is what I was made for. So if this is you, that's where you can go to find out more. But if you're not, if you say, that's not quite me, but you re something's resonating with you, grab a hold of the book, Dream Culture, Bringing Dreams to Life. Um, Janine and I wrote that, Andy and Janine Mason. It will is full of activities and exercises that will literally help you tap into what is inside you, deal with the challenges, turn that into practical action steps, and move forward. It'll super, super helpful. Uh, if you're struggling with hope and saying, God, how do I how do I navigate this? Grab a hold of the book, Finding Hope in Crazy Times. Again, literally every single day, you walk through a story from our lives and navigating continent changes, ups and downs, sideways, hearing God and what that turned into. And by the way, just so encourage you, take the time to pause Sit back and ask yourself some of those questions. What am I doing with my life? Where am I headed? If I was born for some great thing, what is that? No one was born for insignificance. So what am I created for? Take time, walk through that process, look at what you're doing and say, what if I changed? I looked at who I am, who the people that I'm called to serve, what is my superpower? What is the gifting and ability that when I give myself to those that they develop and are enhanced over time so literally I can help hundreds if not thousands of people and serve them with my gifting? What about you? I encourage you, uh, take this time, make the most of it because 
uh, if, if you're looking at the world as I'm looking at it, it's going to be different. And literally those that take the time to position and line up, it's going to be so much better. So I bless you. I'm just going to pray. Uh, don't always do this, but just the sense is to do that now. So I just bless you. I bless you whether you're in a shelter in place environment or whether you are alive and free and back to work, seemingly as usual, but different. I bless you to know that the hand of God is on you, that his face is shining on you. Psalm 139, it says that he knows your thoughts before you have them. He knows what you're going to say before you say it. He knows your future and he's in your past. He's your shield right around you. I bless you to just be aware of his presence. And I just speak confidence and courage and his peace literally wrapping around you. Father, thank you for every listener. Release your grace into their life and catalyze them, accelerate them into destiny and purpose. And may they live a fruitful and productive life, even as their soul prospers. Hey, thanks for joining us. You can find out more. We'll put some links in below. And uh, thank you for joining the conversation.